Hey everybody, welcome to our second installment of Story and a Lick. I wanted to talk about a song that I played on quite a while ago. It's called Buy Me a Boat by Chris Jansen. Uh, the story of how this song came about, or how the track came about rather, is kind of interesting. We were doing a demo session for Chris and he did not show up. <laughs> So the guy producing the session, a wonderful songwriter and guitar player, incredible guitar player named Brent Anderson said, just do whatever you want, make it cool. He's not here, so he's gonna do his thing. His thing's gonna be freaking awesome, no matter what he does. I don't know if you've ever seen him perform. He is like a young country Mick Jagger. He's insane. He's running all over the place. He plays drums in his show. He does BMX tricks. It's a spectacle and he has the energy of 10 people. It's crazy. He's also a great songwriter. Uh, the song is fantastic. It's about a guy talking about how money is, it might not be the be all end all, but it sure could buy me a boat. And you can, he's kind of daydreaming about the boat that he would get. So in the, in the session, we all did some kind of weird things on the song. Uh, my two parts in the intro are really simple, but there's some interesting effects on them. So on the right channel, the guitar had I played this guitar. I still have the settings saved from that session on a pedal. I have an older pedal board here that has a Strymon Mobius on it, and I'm using the tremolo out of the Mobius. I'm, I'm set it to a square wave, and it's really fast. It's almost like a stutter effect, like you're chopping parts of the signal out, or it kind of sounds like a helicopter. Anyway, this is the intro to that track. <laughs> Verse starts, I literally just follow the chords. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because everybody gets this wrong. I've heard bands play it live in bars in Nashville cover bands at festivals. I've seen people play it on YouTube and pretty much everybody has got it wrong. I mean, they're not playing the wrong chords or anything, but just the effect does not sound right. I don't think I've ever heard anybody play it with two guitar players where one of them is playing the the helicopter tremolo thing on, on the right channel. Maybe a little grace can be given for the poor guitar player in the band trying to cover both parts. The other channel guitar part that I played on this track has a dotted eighth delay and a wah that is mostly um, in the heel down position. And I sort of rock a little bit, not too much. I'm playing eighth note, I'm plucking kind of a pulse thing and uh, letting, letting the wah slap back in between what I'm playing because it's set to a dotted eighth. So its repeats are gonna be three sixteenths instead of an eighth note, which is two sixteenths. So it ends up falling in between. And that's kind of a trick that The Edge was famous for and people have overdone at churches around the country. And it's very British invasion kind of kind of thing that became sort of a CCM thing. Well, CCM is also in this town and there's a lot of bleed between the two genres, I guess, between country and CCM. Well, country's really pulling from everything now. And part of it's going back pretty classic 90s kind of thing. Um, there's been a big rock element in country. There's a pop element. There's outlaw. There's uh, just all sorts of stuff. Well, back when we tracked this song, when my friend Brent told me, just do whatever you want. Do something cool. Do something off the wall, you know? And uh, we all kind of thought, hey, artist isn't here. We'll make it as cool as possible. So we all did some weird things. And this other channel guitar, this is how you actually play it. I've never heard anybody do this with the right effect setting, the right feel. It's just very simple. I think people are overcomplicating it maybe. So here it is. <laughs> It, and there's that big stop before the chorus and then both guitars are kind of so that's it that's how you play buy me a boat i'm literally playing d and f sharp at the seventh fret with the g and b strings and i'm not even using my pick i'm using these two fingers my uh middle and ring fingers to pluck i'm just playing eighth notes And then I drop down to a second interval from the third to the second, and then down for the G chord, B 
D&D. And then I'm an E in C sharp over the A. And then I jump down to the A in C sharp. Do you hear how the wah is almost always heel down? I'll maybe go a quarter of the way to the toe down position, but I never go. Um, it never opens up, it never gets real. That's wrong. It stays heel down for the most part. So there you have it. That's Buy Me a Boat. That song was literally a demo on a demo session and he released it. This is how I played this on the demo session, on the track. And it just seems like everybody gets it wrong in some way. So uh, right now I'm actually using a wah that is built into the Strymon Mobius as well. I've got it connected with an expression pedal. I'm pretty sure that on the track I used an old Dunlop Crybaby. It's the piece of musical gear that I've had the longest since I started playing in like eighth grade. My dad bought me a wah pedal for Christmas. <laughs> It's a standard Dunlop. I had to have the pot replaced in it, so it's got like a Super Q pot or something like that now. But that was pretty cool. I used the very first, very first pedal I ever got. And the only thing I've had that I still have from way back then, I don't have the first guitar that I ever played anymore. It was a piece of junk Squire Strat. Don't have the first amp. That was a crate. But I do still have this old Crybaby. And I used that on my very first number one as a player. That was the very first hit I ever played on. So there's your story. I hope that sets the record straight for the lick and if you're in a cover band somewhere and you have to play that song now you know how to do it the right way <laughs> all right see y'all